After two racing weekends in the ACHA series, the competition is as close as it ever been. Kent Anderson and Steve Armstrong are 12 points apart with Sylvain Maheu not far behind in 2.5 liters. In Grand Prix, Marc Théoret still sit with first place, but Shane and Kennedy are right there with less than 20 points behind the Cat Cat Cat. Who will leave Brockville with the lead? That's what we're gonna see and find out today. Hydroplane Quebec present the Canadian Hydroplane Association Race Series. And welcome to the second part of the Thousand Island International Regatta here in Brockville. On the program today, the very large fleet of the competitive 2.5 liter and the mighty Grand Prix on this unpredictable river. Let's see what Ben has to say. Last weekend in Syracuse, we had a great race in the 2.5 liter class where we saw eight different qualifying winners, having Sylvain Maru and Douglas Rapp having the best performance. Ken Henderson still leads the championship with 12 points. In the Grand Prix class, Mike Monahan took over Bert Anderson because of shoulder injury. We won one set of qualifying eight where we saw Eric Langevin ride Mike Monahan's rooster tail, but luckily for him, no bad injuries. In championship, Mark Therese still leads in front of the GP777. Thank you, Ben. Come back with us after these messages for the first round of qualification. This web series brought to you by Wolf Engines, the Saint Felicien Regatta in collaboration with ProNet Regent Cote and Midas Restaurant, Anderson Hydroplane, Shane Custom Metal Fabricator, Passion VR, Caravan Vaillancourt and EMS Environmental Manufacturing Solution, the Construction Labrec et Poirier, and Hedge Tools and Machine. This is an hydroplanequebec.com presentation in collaboration with the Regats of Valley Field. With a threatening win that the 2.5 drivers came on the cor course for the first set of eats. In Eat 1A, the current leader, Ken Anderson, want to increase his lead for the championship. After a great start, four, four boats came into the first corner at full throttle. At the exit of Turn 1, Poirier and Anderson were racing deck to deck until Anderson almost spun the boat out in Turn 2, which led Marco Poirier run away with an easy win. Final result? Poirier, followed by Kent Anderson and Douglas Rapp. After he saw Anderson getting a second place, Steve Armstrong had a chance to get close to him in points for the championship. 
Brandon Kennedy was the first to cross the starting line followed by Armstrong who had the advantage of being in the inside lane. For two laps Kennedy kept pushing Armstrong but the Brockville residence was too fast. Kennedy had then to watch for Lemelin and Maisonneuve who were both coming fast behind him. Kennedy finally held his opponent beating them by less than a boat length. So Armstrong first followed by Kennedy and Lemelin. After a couple of tries we finally were able to race eat one seat but only Sunday morning. In this heat, Sylvain Maher was too fast for the competition as he easily ran away with the win. Rob Stevenson followed him a couple of boat lengths behind. For two laps, Villauer and Rus had a good battle, but Rus was a bit faster and got third place. All the fans along the shoreline were looking forward to seeing the favorite Bert Anderson in the Sealers GP777 take the water. On top of that, they would get to see their hometown driver race against the current point leader, Marc Théoret. At the start of the heat, Ghislain Marcoux in Group ABS took the lead from the outside. In lane one, Anderson engaged in a battle with Marcoux, which lasts about two laps. Having a lot of mechanical issue so far this year, Marcou decided to back off a little bit and let Anderson go ahead. At the end of the four lap, Anderson was first, followed by Marcou, Théoré and Wolf. The fan who knows about Grand Prix class were looking forward to see Eat 1B for two reasons. One, this was the first race in Brockville for Eric Langevin since his spectacular blowover last year. And it was also the return of Jimmy King at the helm of GP10, the Charger, replacing Jimmy Chain. At the start of the race, there were three boats wide at full throttle heading to turn one. At the exit of the first turn, 88 and 104 came out like two rockets and left their competitor behind them. The two Bergeron all battled hard for four laps to see Tom Pacradoni win by half a boat length over Norm Shannon. This was probably one of the best eat for the season. Tough luck for King, as for the first time this year, a mechanical failure prevented the GP10 from finishing a heat. Four boats were scheduled to make the start for Heat 1C, but the GP79 bad influence had to miss this heat as it was not ready yet after a major repair following a flip in Stewart, Florida. Third in the standing, Brandon Kennedy was looking forward to gain a couple of points on the leaders, but unfortunately something failed and he had to stop the boat before the start. So only Patrick Howard and Ken Brody made the start for Eat 1C. After racing deck to deck for a lap, Hayward ran away but was given a penalty and it was Ken Brody who got the 25 points for the win. Uh, well, I'm going to relax for a while. It's such a busy time. I'll spend a lot of time with my family. Uh, I play a lot of guitar, I spend a lot of time playing music, and uh, I'm pretty into uh, just having fun with friends. Um, I like all different kinds of music, but if I had to tell you my like top three bands, I'd say that uh, The Beatles, Nirvana, and uh, Green Day. Uh, yeah, um, well, my daughter's a, a cheerleader and a soccer player, 
Um, she wants to get into boat racing too, but I'm not sure if I really want to let that happen. Um, and my two young boys, uh, that's all they do is talk about boat racing. So uh, I'm safe to say that we're going to be involved in this sport for a long time. Uh, well, I don't think I could stop them. Um, something that I love so much that uh, I can't blame them for loving it too. I think I'd help them in any way I could. Um, that's a tough question. I, I Just, I guess, a laid-back guy who likes to have fun. I don't get stressed out very easily, and uh, I think if you looked around the pits, you'd find that a lot of these guys have that trait. You know, we're easy-going people who just like to have a good time. <laughs> uh, it depends on the day, I think. It depends on the day. Um, she, uh, I think I scare her with a lot of things I do, and I, I think she, she loves it, but at the same time, it's a stressful thing to go boat racing every week, so I think I could describe her as an amazing person for putting up with it. <laughs> Probably that I play guitar and sing. Uh, a lot of people are shocked with that. And, uh, I wrote a song about a fellow boat racer that's posted on uh, Facebook if anybody wants to take a look at that. That's a tough question too. I guess uh, for me, I've been in two accidents in the sport and it doesn't scare you at the time, it's when you get home and you realize what you have to lose when you look at your kids and you think that, uh, you know, dangerous things can happen on the race course. So, uh, so I guess that's probably the scariest thing. After the break, the second round of qualifiers. This web series brought to you by Wolf Engines, the Saint Felicien Regatta in collaboration with ProNet Regent Cote and Midas Restaurant, Anderson Hydroplane, Shane Custom Metal Fabricator, Passion VR, Caravan Vaillancourt, and EMS Environmental Manufacturing Solution, the Construction Labrec et Poirier, and Hedge Tools and Machine. This is an hydroplanequebec.com presentation in collaboration with the regats of Valley Field. Knowing that it would be the last chance to get directly to the final, this final sets of EAT were crucial for all teams. EAT 2A had to be stopped when Douglas Rapp, in bad influence, barrel roll coming into turn 2. No injuries and the boat was in good condition, but Rap would have to go through the consolation. At the restarts, three boats wanted to confirm their spot for the final. Rus, Stevenson and Anderson left their opponent behind them and took the first three places, winning their place for the final. Once again, it to be at the potential to be a blast with four front runner in the race. There was a surprise in the heat as Donald Leduc came from nowhere to easily beat Kennedy, Armstrong, Lecomte and Poirier. The best battle of this heat was the race for the fourth place between local driver Steve Armstrong and Marco Poirier. Final result, Leduc followed by Kennedy and Lecomte. For Sylvain Maheu, a second place in E2C would be enough to get lane 1 in the final, but he had to be careful as the other competitor had to win his, this heat to get into the final. Maheu did not take any chances by nailing the start and le leading wire to wire. Mathieu Lemelin finished second, getting lane one in the first consolation, followed by Dominique Demers. So, the top six going to the finals are in order by lane Maheu, Rousse, Kennedy, 
Stevenson, Armstrong and Anderson. After penalties were assessed to Tom Villauer, Mathieu Lemelin won the first consolation and got seventh lane for the final. After he saw Marco Poirier hook his boat in turn two, Donald Leduc easily won the second consolation. It will be his first final since 2010. This second set of heats would be the last before the final, so all drivers had to make gain. All drivers had to make gain as many points as possible to get in the front row in the final. E2A could have been called the Valley Field Battle, as all the drivers are from the Valley Field area. It was a spectacular start as Gislain Marcoux in lane 4 almost blew over the GP101 group ABS which let Hayward and Theore go ahead. Even though Hayward pulled away with a big lead on Theore, he had been assessed for a penalty for bearing out. That opened the doors for the Grand Prix Valley Field, who had 25 very important points, followed by Marcou and Hayward. Since Jimmy King had to once again pull the boat back to the dock, only three boats answered the call for E2B. Still on restriction and having to start from the outside, Mike Monahan, replacing Bert Anderson in the Steelers, seems to have the best start, but the referee find out it was too early and he was penalized. That led Norm Shannon win the heat, followed by Ken Brody Jr. in intensity, GP50 and Monahan. Heat 2C was special for several reasons. Marty Wolf need the win to be on the front row. Tom Pacradoni wanted to get in lane one for the final and the heat was also the return of bad influence driven by Joe Suvi after the accident in Florida. The three favorite nailed the start with Wolf ahead. Pacradoni pushed him hard for a lap until GP88 crankshaft broke ending the team's weekend. So Wolf easily win the heat followed by Kennedy who confirmed his spot for the final as a trailer and Suvi who had a blast during his first event in Grand Prix Ride. All the qualifiers are over. Here are the Grand Prix finalists in order of lane. The final will be exciting. Let's listen to Mike Ward and Chris Paul for the description of the finals. It looks like we're getting these races just in time. I don't like the color of that sky down towards Prescott. Well, as long as it only does that in Prescott, we'll still be okay. All right, drivers are getting into their lanes now. And these are all the top drivers. Look at how closely they are connected here for this final. Watch for the flag drop. And a 2.5 race finals has begun. Look, and look at that. Your top three drivers, all one, two, three at the top of the back. We got Steve Kent and Simon Mayu driving the top gun boat, the lightning bolt on the side. This is not going to be a runaway race, folks. <laughs> Looks like Rod Stevenson is running out ahead. Ken Henderson is catching up pretty quickly. We had a spin out there, but he managed to get... We got a caution flag up. But we're going to find this boat is going to be capable of turning around and rejoining the fray.
Now as we make it around turn one, it appears that Rob Stevenson driving the wet spot boat is in the lead, and Kent Henderson just makes a turn around turn one, may have moved into second place. Hey, Stephen Armstrong and Brandon Kennedy are having a real go back there in the middle of the pack. Currently, Kent's kind of neck and neck with Savelle Mayon, which is the top gun boat. No trading spots, 2-3, back and forth. we still got some laps to go, though. Stevens is starting to work. He's got about a quarter kilometer lead now, and Ken Henderson is now in second place. We've got Steve back there bowing for fourth and fifth. the white flags up and the white flag indicates that these drivers are going to be on their last lap. Checkered flag, and it appears pending there's no penalties that Rob Stevenson will be the 2.5 champion here at the Thousand Islands International Regatta. Well, considering the start he had to the season with the motor difficulties, it's really nice to see him pull off a win today. We're not too sure yet, but I think uh, Kent may have finished third place. And here's Kent Harrison from Blockville, one of our lead organizers. Let's give him a big round of applause and give him a wave. Kent worked really hard to put this event together. And uh, he had a great, great weekend of racing. I'm sure he would have liked to have a little bit of this off, but you never know. There could have been some penalties out there on the course that may have bumped him up a spot or two. And we're waiting for Steve Armstrong to make his way back around.
check, check, check. One, two. Is there anything back there? Have a little technical difficulties on the microphone here. So Bert Henderson is our winner. After three events, Sylvain Meyer is now the leader in the 2.5 liter class. When you know that the each win worth 25 points, you can figure out how the standings are close with only 36 points between the first and the fifth place. In the Grand Prix class, Marc Théoré is still the leader, but Bert Anderson is coming fast behind him. All these guys will have to be at the top of their game for the next event, which will be in Valleyfield, the Super Bowl of Hydroplane Racing. 